Hey everyone, this is Wes from the Console Gaming Crew and we couldn't be happier to announce that we are now part of the Boss Rush Podcast Network and are featured on BossRushGames.com. BossRushGames.com is a great place where you can find up-to-date news articles, blogs, and podcasts about video games. In addition to that, there is a growing collection of podcasts in not just the gaming community, but other communities as well. We are honored to be a part of such a great network of podcasters, so please stop by and give everyone a listen. Thank you. And enjoy the show. Yo, crew members, what it be? Hey, oh, damn, you got deep on that. Yo, hey, man, yo, my, my voice sounds a little deeper today than normal, so. Yes, for those listening, I am back. <laughs> I am back with two healthy eyes. I got the shit out of them. <laughs> And right, I'm let's good. Just, let's start it. All right. I'm good. It feels good to be back. I hate that one's out and one's in because now I'm back, but Anthony is on drill. Yep. So next so, week is going to be him and three amigos back again. Yes, it will be the three amigos back again. But first order of business, something that we are very excited about. We finally, re- well, not finally, it was what, a week ago, last week. Yeah. Last week, we reached a thousand followers, <laughs> which, you know. We thank you guys a thousand times over. Yes, more than a thousand times. And we mentioned that we wanted to do some sort of giveaway when we reached a thousand followers. And now that we have, I'm ready to hit you with those details. Yeah, so like (laughs) when Anthony and I were talking about this, Anthony kept on like telling me not to say anything because I, dude, I, you should have seen me in here last week. Did I really wanted to say something about, you mean, about what we're doing with this? I don't want to bust your excitement. Do you want to say it? I mean, we can go back and forth on it. So uh, first things first. The winner of the contest that we're going to do is going to get, um, they're going to get stickers. I mean, they're going to have our OG stickers and then our new headphone stickers. They're going to get a bunch of those. Yeah, you're going to get a t-shirt of your choice. We have we have the new logo that Wes made, which is bananas. Love it. And we have our OG logo. It'll be the shirt of your choice, the logo of your choice. And uh, it's going to be a nice merch pack. Yeah. And then on top of that, we will go ahead and give, I mean, whoever the winner is, their choice of either... Uh, PlayStation, Xbox, or Switch, a one-year subscription. Yes. We'll go ahead, we'll we'll pay for it, and then send you the card and everything else, so that way you can have that one-year subscription. Yep, and so you're going to get a merch pack from us and a year of gaming on us. Yeah. You game however often, you, you know, whatever you want to do, whatever system you want, it's on us for the year. Because what do we always say at the end? <sighs> game game on. on. And that's yeah. what we want for everybody, so yeah. So the way you are going to enter is you can DM us at console crew on Twitter. Yep. And on, I think, well, Wes was supposed to have the calendar up for me because I forgot the date already, but we will accept entries until April 23rd. That's a Friday, right? Yes. Friday, April 23rd. We record so, on Saturdays. So on the 24th, we will go ahead and do the drawing. Yeah. So you have until the 23rd. Once we get all those names in, we'll put them all in a hat. 24th, we'll do the drawing. We'll announce the winner. And then, you know, we'll get in contact and get you your stuff absolutely and you know something let's go ahead and add a little more to it let's go ahead and because we do have people from instagram that don't have twitter that do follow us on instagram so let's go ahead and add them in too you can go ahead and drop us a dm on instagram as well we are console gaming crew on instagram yeah and you know if you want to do it through any of our things i mean if you're the one person that listens to us on facebook <laughs> you can send us a message console gaming crew on facebook like Wes said console gaming crew on instagram at console crew on twitter that really should if you really feel like dropping us a gmail you can. We'll take that, too. ConsoleGamingCrew at gmail.com. This is weird. I feel like I'm plugging us twice because I'm going to do this at the end yeah, of the show, too. But, yeah, you have all those avenues. So get in touch with us. Like we said, you have about two weeks for a solid merch pack. And once again, and we, one year we truly want to say thank you. Thank you, everybody who follows us. Into which a lot of the thousand, actually, we follow them and they follow. Dude, it's it, it's a mutual thing. I mean, I mean yeah. they follow us back. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's I love it, man. Yo, we, we have created a really awesome community, especially on Twitter. Yeah, it it has been such a fun journey over, you know, not quite two years no. yet, but, you know, to think on one hand that, you know, okay, maybe to some people a thousand doesn't sound like a lot, but when you have firm memories of five, six followers, <laughs> Which all of them us. being friends and family. <laughs> like our wives and... <laughs> yeah, just trying to make us look good and feel good. Um, yeah, Agreed. we couldn't appreciate it anymore. You know, that's why we love doing this stuff. But uh, anyway, so now that we got that out of the way, 
the episode for the day is going to be another installment of Heroes and Villains. Yes. Yeah, this time we took it upon ourselves to come up with a game, and we decided to go with Castlevania, another yes. one that's got deep roots and goes back a long time. Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, yeah. all the way back to the original character, technically being born in 1062. 1060? Oh, <laughs> I thought you were talking about mine. I was like, no, 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 mine. <laughs> but anyway, so Castlevania is a platformer developed and published by Konami for the family computer disc system in Japan in September of 1986. It was then ported to cartridge and released in North America for the NES in May of 1987, where the gist of it is you take the role of Simon Belmont as he fights through Dracula's castle to defeat the count himself, who is said to resurrect every 100 years to take over the world. So, natural heroes and villains fashion i took the hero this time west took the villain so i will start you off with simon belmont now simon belmont born in 1669 hmm. yeah young lad a descendant of the belmont clan is a renowned vampire hunter from the 17th century and also the first and one of the most recognized heroes from the castlevania series with supernatural perception, the strength at the peak of normal human capabilities, and armed with the Vampire Killer, a whip that will destroy all who are related to the knight, he sets out on his 22nd birthday to prove himself worthy of his family's legacy. Were you doing anything that deep at 22? 22. 22, I was probably drinking at your place, so I don't yeah, know that I was proving were. any sort of legacy. Mm, no, 22, I still had my first apartment, you know what I mean? So that was, uh, <laughs> that was a journey all on its own. <laughs> the, sto yes. the stories we could tell on another podcast oh yeah absolutely <laughs> it's not gaming related yeah <laughs> super not safe for work anyway so on a 22nd birthday on easter day a hundred years after he was defeated by christopher belmont simon's great-grandfather dracula was reawakened by a dark order of humans using uh, sorry a dark order of humans during a dark mass in an abandoned monastery Simon enters Dracula's castle alone to face off with Dracula himself and prove his worth. Now, there is going to be a little bit of spoilers here. The game's been out for a long time, yeah. so I'm not going to feel too bad about it. <laughs> but Simon is, you know, the main protagonist of Castlevania 1 and 2, so I'm going to take you a little bit through both. So that is, the, you know, the first one where you set off into Dracula's castle to prove your worth. Now, at the end of that game, you are unable to kill him and un. Oh, I thought you were. I saw your hand go up. I thought you were trying to stop me. No. Uh, unbeknown to Simon at the time, Dracula had managed to place a curse on a wound that he inflicted on Simon's back, and that is then what leads into the events of Castlevania II, which is the curse that Dracula places upon Simon seven years ago. Slowly begins to ravage his body. He begins to think that death was near, and then one night, six years after he returned from the time rift, he was contemplating his situation at his family's cemetery. Suddenly, a mysterious woman appeared behind him, standing in the morning mist, and she explained to him that the feeling that he had was due to the curse that Dracula placed on him, and that his life was in real danger. In order to be free of this curse, he would have to collect Dracula's remains, his nail, heart, rib, bone, eyeball, and ring, and burn them all in the ruins of Dracula's castle. While this would defeat him for the time being, she warned that even this might not be enough to defeat Dracula forever. That's some Horcrux type she, shit yep, right there. She then vanished into the mist... And that is what sets up the story of Castlevania II. Now, a little bit about Simon more specifically. He's rather he's rather brash. Rather. Rather. He's rather brash Ew. and inclined to force his way through situations. He's also known to take matters regarding any negative aspects about the Belmont clan, in particular their disappearance by the time of the 19th century to heart, because he felt responsible for the clan's failures by that point. Because he failed to kill Dracula the first time. So it can weigh on you. Also, yeah. Also, by his own admission, he was not too knowledgeable about magical practices, although he trains extensively and at times excessively. In the original Castlevania, you will remember him from his brown hair, hair, brown hair, hair, his brown hair, his leather breastplate, and them tall, bo tall boys. Why did I write tall boys? Look, what you found in your research on whatever website you decided to use. That's entirely your prerogative. But now, need, hold on. We, yo, yo, we need to keep this clean over here, okay? I'm just trying to think of what... Okay, there's two things that I'm thinking of here, and I want people to experience this with me together in this moment. I don't know if they want to. Is that one of them is I'm trying to figure out what I tried to put that my phone corrected to tall boys, and I want to know why my phone thought it was okay to turn it into tall boys. <laughs> so we'll just say, Castlevania, you'll remember him from his brown hair leather breastplate, and bandana. 
Occasionally, he has been uh, depicted with a cape as well. He also, even though he has red hair on the box art, they decided to go with brown hair in the game, which they didn't. La- they did later fix, and then he rolled with his red hair through then. Uh, some other appearances for him, obviously, again, Castlevania and Castlevania 2. He was in Castlevania Grimoire of Souls, and we talked about this show on a podcast before. Do you remember Captain N, the Game Master? It's an animated series from the 80s and 90s that had different yes. like video game storylines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in that. Uh, he was a he was a playable character, an 8-bit playable character in Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance in <laughs> Boss Rush mode. So shout out to our network. Shout out to our <laughs> amazing network, the Boss Rush Network. Uh, Castlevania Judgment, Castlevania Harmony of Despair, and then he had various non-Castlevania appearances. Probably the biggest one that I saw was uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate. You can nice. use him. Uh, and there's a parody version of himself called Simondo Belmont in uh, one of the Contra games. His name is Simondo. Simondo. I am Simondo. You killed my father. <laughs> Prepare to, to die. die. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, Who would have thought some thirty somethings would go ahead and drop uh, drop some Princess Bride in? And reception of him of Simon went well. And these are two of the funny. Well, one funny thing that I found, but he's listed as Nintendo Power's seventh favorite hero. Also, fun fact: Simon Belmont is part of what is known as the worst cover in the history of Nintendo Power which depicted Simon holding the decapitated head of Count Dracula. And it's considered the worst because hundreds of thousands of parents called in to complain about the level of gore on the cover. So what is, hold on, tell me, I want to pull it up so we can both see it. Let's go. Please do. uh, Well, just type in um, Nintendo Power Castlevania cover. And it should be one that has, you know, Simon holding up his decapitated head and uh complaints uh complaints were even recorded that children suffered horrific nightmares resulting from that image um let's see wes is looking these up right now we're looking at it uh you know type in uh nintendo power castlevania dracula head i guess (laughs) i don't know how you want to how you want to look this up but you know maybe that you know what do your spiel i'll look it up on right here oh we found so see that doesn't. I mean, I mean, look. Okay, for, first of all, he looks more Roman. You know what I mean with his garb yeah. than than I would expect. I mean, well, I guess Romania. I'm, Roman, I'm sitting I, a little bit further from the TV, but like that's not. I wonder if that's a cleaned up version. Hmm. That's got to be a cleaned up version because you know they said the the parents complained about the level of gore, unless the level of gore is just a decapitated head. There's no look, blood. Look, you also have to understand that what people consider gore back then is much different than what we have now. Yeah, this I believe was before Doom. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, yeah, pretty Mortal much. Kombat came out and fucked yeah, so everything. Yeah, like, yes, yeah, so like I mean, I mean, that's his head. You okay, mean, completely so, de- decapitated. I, mean, I guess people, parents just didn't want their kids seeing it. And again, complaints were recorded so. that children suffered horrific nightmares from it. Yeah, so yeah, it says right here, redacted. Okay, yeah. So this go. is definitely it. Oh yeah! Oh no no! Here's why. Okay, so the sword, you can see a little bit. You mean you can see like where it would be like lines of blood coming down his hand. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So, gotcha, gotcha. Um, All right. So that was a fun little. Uh, that was a fun little yeah. jump. So that's Simon Belmont, and Wes has the dark, demon, ancient demon himself, Count Dracula, the Dark Lord, from Romania, from Transylvania. Born in 1062 as Mathi- uh, Matthias, uh, wow, this is going to be fun to say. Oh, boy. Yep. Look, we all know me and names. <laughs> um, it is, uh, shit, nah, I fucking pulled the wrong thing up. Uh, known as uh, Matthias Kornqvist. Kronqvist, Korn- it looks? Looks like Kronqvist. Yeah, yeah, yeah Kronqvist. Um, or Dracula Vlad Tepes. <laughs> like, I love how some of the, like, Count Dracula... Is kind of terrifying. If they went the other way, like the main Count antagonist Tempest. to this game, I'm gonna go and slay Matthias. I'm what? going to, I'm going to decapitate Count Tepes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so um, he was first seen, obviously, in 1986 with the uh, Castlevania, and he was created by uh, Hitoshi. God Akam- damn Akamatsu. It. And look, yo, yo, here's the thing. I look at these names like millions of times when I go ahead and do this research. I try to say them when I'm doing them. But then when I get on mic, it's like, 
can I give can I give you advice, please? Because I've done this before. When you're looking up their names and you're practicing them, no. take that take that name, type it into YouTube. You can probably find videos of people saying their name, and then you'll know exactly how to say it. Okay, them. smart way to go. Probably. So, um, he basically was made to resemble Bella Lugosi's Dracula. You know what I mean for the first few games, but his Dracula was never the same going from game to game. It really wasn't. You had different versions of him to where he had, I mean, uh, gray hair, black hair. I mean, he had like a, I mean, like like a paler face, or then he went ahead and had like purple. Mm -hmm. You mean like purple hair? Like it just it, it went all over the place. Um, but it was open to interpretation, <laughs> of course. But then I mean, he took on a more demonic uh, beard and goatee look. I mean, which kind of gave him basically what we all know now. I mean, from the games. And um, so according to uh, his bio on Castlevania Judgment, he stands at about seven three. That is a that's a imposing tall... figure. Now the that reason is an imposing figure. <laughs> Some some sources actually have him taller than that, but the basic point of having him be that tall is that um, he's always as twice as tall as one, as, as whichever Beaumont or you know, or legacy of Beaumont he's fighting against, which kind of makes it to where that they're you know, you know, they, 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 they have to jump high to go ahead and actually hit him. Belmont. Belmont. Why did I say Beaumont? <laughs> I don't know. You made him sound way too ritzy and fancy. And look, I, and look, I I have Belmont in here too. I don't. God damn. Yeah. My, I'm Simon Beaumont. <laughs> 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 um andy gave the uh, i mean a pretty good synopsis of you know, I mean like basically how everything happens like dracula constantly is being brought back you know what i mean because look he's immortal you know what i mean like even when you think he's dead it's like it's like it's like comic book characters they ain't never dead you may have thought he was dead he ain't dead he ain't never dead and um look i mean uh the one time they didn't he was uh deceased he he was uh reanimated by soma, soma cruz you know what i mean to go ahead and come back again um, his actual date of death, apparently, according to the Fandom website, is August 11th, 1999. So going from 1062 to 1999, that's a... You had a hell of a run. That's a hell of a run, man. It's a hell of a run. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, he had, I mean, the standard abilities you would go ahead and think of, you know, like Hellfire and, um, you know what I mean, like, I mean, uh, I mean, all this other stuff, like with Dominance and Teleportation... Um, he had this one power to where he can go ahead. He'll teleport to one side of the screen, open his cape up, and like three fireballs or something would like come out. I don't know. Look, so I've already said before because I said this on the uh, Twisted Cape cast or Twisted Cape thing that Extrapolate Games that I was on recently. I don't know too too much about these games, which is why I love this research. Yeah, I will play a tra a, a, a Castlevania game. They're I will. They're fun. I will they're absolutely fun. play one of these games because I think I think there's it, there's a few of them on um on the uh, Switch. Switch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, as with long the, as you're okay with platforming. I'm not Dan. Good. Good. Oh, he talked about that last night too. Just quick sidetrack. He he laughed. He was roaring on the floor because um we t we said something. Oh, I was, it was with Anthony. When I was talking about the uh, Outriders and how Dan was getting ready to like throw his control because Dan had a bad night. You know I mean, in the first few nights of Outriders, and Dan was laughing at how much we were making fun of him on here. So love you, Dan. Just quick shout out to you, man. But um, let's see here. <clears throat> when it comes down to the actual character themselves, uh, look, you're not going to find anybody that's more more of a popular villain. Than, you know what I mean? Than Dracula? Than Dracula, yeah. I mean, dude's got his own serial, <laughs> basically. <laughs> uh, so he's listed as the top third villain in uh, uh, 2006's Game Informer. He was also listed as the number seven most recurring video game character who has died repeatedly and then been resurrected. <laughs> so quite literally, he's they got go the ahead longevity and, record. <laughs> oh, 100%. Um, yo, he is, he was ranked number 16 in his top 25 evil masterminds of all time. Um, and I also saw a few other things, I mean, to where, like, they, they talk about how he, um, he technically isn't the villain. He was only turned evil because of what happened to him, because his first wife died. And then from there, he went ahead and he got the power of, I think it was like the Crimson, uh, Stone or Crimson Amulet. I can't, I can't quite remember what it's called. But from there is where he went ahead and actually, um, I mean, I mean, I mean, that's how he actually, yeah, the Crimson Stone, there you go. And that's how he actually became a vampire. And then from there, he went ahead, I mean, he built his army and the fortress into which we all know as Castlevania. Yes, sir. And that's where everything starts I mean, with the games. Because, yeah, yo, he, was a, he was alive for a solid, almost like what, almost 100 years before, mm -hmm. before even um, Belmont, Simon Belmont even went ahead and got to him. Yeah, because he fought with Simon's great-grandfather. Yeah. But, um, yeah, dude, like, uh, 
we try to keep, we want to keep these a little bit shorter so we didn't really dive into much of the um like the voice actors and give me basically stuff that i gush over <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i will say that i mean look there is a there is a netflix series there is. You know i mean that is castlevania and you know i mean it, you know I mean it runs basically it, it's all just i you mean know, animated out and it looks great i haven't watched it yet but i definitely plan on it but you know i mean for the most part that is what we have for castlevania yeah and as we do most times i know wes got his and i also got mine from those those fandom sites that you can find yeah are they're such a great source of information that's yeah, right a lot that's of I got mine yeah, a lot of what i got here was from castlevania.fandom.com so yeah yeah they have a lot of great information on and, there, so yeah didn't you know m- m- most of their stuff do you know, they don't you know, they, they don't bullshit man we got i mean they have all the real deal absolutely but um that is heroes and villains castlevania baby yeah, we kept that one super short. We did. For once, we actually stuck to what we said we were going to do. But we do have other things we do want to talk about. Yeah, that's true. We got more for you. Yeah, we do. So, we gave you Simon Belmont. I don't know why I made him French. <laughs> when you called him Beaumont, I was just like, <laughs> Sony, I am Simon Beaumont DeMille. <laughs> he went to Mill. Oh, uh, we gave you Simon Belmont. We gave you Dracula. Now, let's give you news. So, got a few things here. And I first want to talk about Deathloop. So, Deathloop has been delayed. And they're looking to have the game come out in September 2021. I feel like we're in an endless loop of death loop delays. <laughs> we're just in an endless <laughs> loop of delays, period. Yeah. Yeah, so um, they went ahead and they said, I mean, this is off of a um, off their Twitter feed. This is from Arcane? Yeah, it, well, no, this, this is from Deathloop official. Okay. But it looks like, yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, it look, it's, it, it's from Arcane Line. So we've made a decision to delay the launch of Deathloop to September 14th, 2021. We're committed to quality and preserving our team's ambitions for Deathloop while ensuring the health and safety of everyone at, at Arcane. We'll be using this extra time to accomplish our goal, create a fun, stylish, and mind-bending experience, which this game definitely will have. It, I mean, it, it definitely fucks with your head a little definitely bit. definitely unique. Yeah. We apologize for the extended wait and thank you all for your passion and excitement. It is the fuel that powers our creativity and our hard work. We can't wait to show you more Death Loop soon. And this comes from the game director Dinga Baka Bakada ba- <laughs> Baka Can Bakaba. Baka That you one sounded like you didn't <laughs> even try. I, I did. I just you... read it. I, I I read it too quickly. Dingo or no Dinga Bakaba. <laughs> And the art director, Sebastian Mil- uh, Mid- Midland. Yeah. So we're going to keep that same energy that we always have. If you're going to delay your game, that is fine. Just put out what you say you're going to put out. Yeah. We say it, I've said it once. I've said it a hundred times. We'll I say mean, a hundred more. I mean, look, yo, even with like a Halo Infinite, yo, they're still putting out like weekly things. I mean, we, we, we just haven't talked about them. But yeah. yo, yo, they're dropping like, I mean, weekly little news updates saying, okay, this is what we're working on now. This is what we have now. I mean, like, like I mean, they're getting us to that point. Yeah. To where it's like, okay, give me because... I still have faith that give me that 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 game is going to come out in give me during holiday this year, mm-hmm. and when it does, I think it's going to be fantastic. I really do, or at least I hope. But um, yeah, so that's what we have for um, you know, coming from Deathloop. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is E3. So E3 has officially said that they will happen this year. There was an article that I was going to talk about last week up until right before we jumped on me, and, uh, Anthony, and I. They there was an article talking about there might be a pay. To go ahead and like let me watch this shit online for e3 because i was ready because i was ready to go in i was ready to go freaking in hard on that shit because i found that absolutely atrocious absolutely but they you don't you don't charge ever and then yeah during a pandemic time you decide to charge people yeah so i went ahead but right before we jumped on wherever we cut the mics on there was an article that popped out that when they, they said no, no 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 we're not doing that shit. Okay. so i decided to hold this off until until good now. good 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 so it's going to take place from june 12th to 15th um and uh we are going to see appearances from nintendo xbox capcom konami ubisoft take two warner brothers games uh and coke media so we're going to get a bunch of stuff, I and mean, we're going to get a lot of shit from a lot of people. Obviously, the big one missing is Sony. They're still going to go ahead and do their own thing. Uh, having Nintendo and Xbox come back 
is pretty big. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's bigger for E3 for them to come back than going ahead and saying, okay, you mean they're, you mean they're going to do their own showcases? Because last year the showcase, I mean, we did episodes on this shit like all summer. You know what I mean? Like the showcases weren't really bad. No. I mean, some of them we definitely wanted more. Yeah, some, but, some were a little bit lackluster, but it was, you know, it was nice, kind of. So we are, I, I jotted this down because I'm we are going to make this, <laughs> we are going to make this an episode between the three of us to actually have this conversation. I might actually even bring in one or two other people for this because I feel like this conversation needs a full debate, but we're going to talk about the summer, the summer game um, events and whether they should stick to individual running events or whether they should go ahead and go back to these conference PAX East, you know what I mean? Uh, E3 style of systems. Yeah. So, I mean, look, I mean, it's. Let's just see what happens. Even though it's for a phenomenal reason, I just realized that's probably gonna be right with my sabbatical. Is this is gonna be the first time that like the Super Bowl of gaming, I probably won't be here to talk about. Mm. Yeah, I gotta make sure I got some good people lined up too. Yeah, June twelfth to fifteenth. Yeah, that's, that's that's probably gonna be a no go. That's right around the uh, right around game time. Yeah, <laughs> that's right around game time. It is so wild, just completely side. It, it it is so wild thinking that you're gonna be gone for like you mean like probably like three four weeks. Yeah. To go ahead and you know I mean do what you gotta do, obviously. Look, man, first kid. Handle yeah, it, bro. Absolutely. Do what you gotta do, man. I have no issue with it. Yeah. Oh, but I'll be back. Oh, I know you'll be back. That's not you know I mean that's not the part I'm worried about. Look, man, you you helped build this place where we sit. So you will be back. Oh, back for sure. <laughs> but moving right along. Moving right along. Mo yeah, I said it all wrong. What I don't is, care. What is happening? I don't care. <laughs> Shut up. So, a little too much. Shut move, up. Moving a lot around. Shut up. So the last bit of news that I have has to do with Borderlands. Yes, yes, yes. I'm talking about Borderlands. Big whoop. Big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you said, like, like you just went back to that whole like, hey, just make fun of yourself to take the power away so they can't do it to you. Because <laughs> you knew as soon as you said that, I was about to be like, oh, really? Fuck, you're talking about Borderlands? Shh. Look, knew? look, Anthony did that to me last week, went ahead and, I mean, literally rolled his eyes and then and then started shitting on me about it. So, look, it's whatever, man. I'm fine with it. Randy Pitchford, had, he, I mean, he put out a statement about the movie that's coming out, you know what I mean, that has um, Kate Blanchett in it, Kevin Hart, Jack Black. Um, so, <clears throat> just a lot of question marks. <sighs> yeah, we, so Anthony and I talked about the synopsis last week and confusing it is i mean because you because basically it's turned <laughs> i was i was saying to um like mike and hob and dan i'm like it's turned into resident evil if you think about it resident evil 2 what was the plot save the girl mm -hmm. i mean this is heroes you mean what was the plot about the heroes save the cheerleader save the world what's the plot for borderlands the movie <laughs> save atlas's daughter yeah that's the plot of the movie and from there like i mean we're going ahead like i mean we're getting tiny tina we're getting krieg into which krieg is apparently basically her bodyguard which makes no fucking sense to me you know what i mean we're getting roland we're getting lilith we're getting tannis and claptrap no mordecai no brick no axton no salvador no zero you know what i mean i'm not seeing i mean a bunch of other characters i mean hopefully we get marcus and zed you know I mean maybe scooter you know I mean just you gotta have scooter dude who would okay we'll, get you a... <laughs> we'll figure this out later but who could be scooter we'll figure this out <laughs> woody harrelson Nah, he's too old. He's too old to be a scooter. So Randy Pitchford went ahead and made a statement on Twitter, and he said, To the interested, <laughs> the Borderlands cinematic universe is not identical to the Borderlands video game universe. We are authentic to characters, tone, and style, but allow for independent storylines. The mediums are not the same, so the content should not be bound to the same rules. I mean, that's fair. He is, he's essentially saying, we know you love these characters. We know you love the dynamic these characters have with other ones, you know I mean, throughout the games. That doesn't mean that you're going to get the same thing from the games with the movie. Well, you know, that's, you know, that's like the Avengers game not being a part of the MCU. They could create their own storyline. They can do what they want with the characters, however they want. Yeah, and <laughs> look, I'm not saying that at the it, same <laughs> at the, at the same time. What I mean, from what I've been told, what we got 
story wise was actually you know I mean not bad yeah you know what I mean? you know, you know, you know, from the game yeah but yeah it's it is one I of those know this things. one hits home for you because this like just like it's important I'm, for a new Resident Evil movie to be good for me it is important for this movie to be good for you I'm just like there is a confusion to me because like Eli Roth is a horror director the guy who is writing this I mean he wrote Chernobyl Chernobyl is not a you mean you mean it's not a it, it has nothing to do with like anything that you know, that Borderlands will be thought to be a part of. Well, I mean, he, you know, he, he's also writing The Last of Us. You know, what I mean, it's going to be coming out to HBO Max. Like that has that, that that is a much darker, deeper content. You know what I mean? Than anything Borderlands does. You know, in mean, Borderlands, you shoot skags and <clears throat> fucking stab bully monks. Like you, it's basically what you do, dude. Loot and fucking you, shoot. Like we've said all the time, it's like you have the roadmap to success right here with this game can you just stick to that and turn that into a movie that's all we've ever wanted that's all anyone that wants a movie off a game ever really wants usually like are there people out there i'm sure that would like i don't know if necessarily you would call it a reimagining or just like a you know their own you know original unique story with their characters sure mm -hmm. but i mean if you're putting out a borderlands movie my assumption is you're not trying to gain new fans really you're more or less trying to cater to your old fans like the people that play your games yeah and that's the thing so the movie is going to essentially be lilith is going to be tasked by the head of atlas corp to find his daughter into which they just picked up a professional bodybuilder slash actor to go ahead and play like a head you know like one of the big big bad bandits so you have so many things happening in this that's just so confusing it's and i mean you also have another actress that they're bringing in that's going to be um it's gonna be somebody from lilith's past i'm fine learning about the character's past look i've i have never found an issue with that but when you when you go ahead and essentially turn this into a lilith movie call it how you see it don't go ahead don't call it borderlands if and i said this before don't call it borderlands if it's not borderlands just call it lilith you have a movie called logan <laughs> just call it lilith but yeah, like dude that, that truthfully dude that's what it is like look i i actually like some of these castings for the movie like ariana greenblatt as tiny tina i love it i love a person of color going ahead and being tiny tina because i feel like that's gonna be hilarious plus i've watched some of her tiktok stuff being on set for doing like stunt practices and it's actually really fucking funny you know what i mean dude between her like um uh florian uh montano give me playing krieg i have no issue with that that dude is a house yo he is huge jack black is claptrap i'm cool jamie lee curtis is tannis i've started to actually kind of roll with it a little bit kate blanchett is lilith maybe kevin hart is rolling i'm still out on but i'm optimistic i guess there's but like they 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 first started talking about all this stuff with going ahead i mean everybody from b1 right mm -hmm. they first started talk, you know, talking about claptrap rolling Lilith. okay cool then you bring in tiny tina all right that's b2 then you bring in Cree. that that that's that's b2 dlc you know what i mean <laughs> that's completely different and then also a dlc in uh borderlands 3. Really? and then you're bringing in people that aren't even a, that have never been a part of it like yo this the head guy of atlas you never fuck with him ever even in the tail stuff you know what i mean like i mean in in, in tail stuff you deal with reese you know what i mean who you know, i mean who's the guy who takes over atlas after the fact so again we'll wait and see this movie's probably not even going to come out until 2022 you know what i mean probably around like maybe fall i'm guessing um, it That's just i guess I don't know, man. It just <laughs> every time we talk about this, I mean, I I always end up just kind of just walking away, kind of with like my head down, kind of like just like walking into the sunset, just like, all right, man. Like, this is gonna be what it's gonna be. Let's go, look, man, because there, dude, there has been a <clears throat> shitty fucking track record for video game movies. How many times have we talked about this? Yeah, and we just had another, we just had a recent reminder as to how bad it can be. Yeah, with uh, Monster Hunter. Well, look, we didn't watch it. IGN said it was bad. Laron from our network from boss rush went ahead and said that he actually enjoyed it so if i can find it i might actually fuck with it just to go ahead and see but again leron is also much much more of a monster hunter like super fan so well, then he well then that's 
someone we should be looking to for the proper review. Yeah, and to which yo, he's I mean he he enjoyed it. I mean which which makes me actually want to go ahead and check it out. All right, you know what? Done. Send it. Watch it. <laughs> but yeah, so we will see what happens. I will continue to be woefully optimistic as of right now because that I mean that's kind of just the way the feel of it. Yeah. But yeah, man. So I gave y'all some depressing as Borderlands news, but that is the rest of the news. So, Andy played something new. I kept going with what I do. So let's tell everybody what we are playing. You want to go first? You want me to go first? I'll go first. Eh, go ahead. Go I'll first. I'll go first. So let, let I might as well start with the most recent news, which is I picked up where Wes left off on Freaky Friday. Love it. Yeah. So <laughs> I got back and I was supposed to start last week, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, two weeks ago I had I was working right overtime. Right when you got your Xbox. Yeah. That's two weeks ago I was working overtime, so I couldn't do it then. Last week, as we all know. I had poopy eyes. He got shit in his eyes. So that's not really what happened, by the way. For all the people that don't know, for all the people that don't know, that's not actually what happened. I just managed to get a double eye infection. That's it. Not like pink eye or nothing like that. Just it's a condition that I live with, and it flares up sometimes. And both my eyes sucked for like four days. But I got into it last night. Wes graciously came over and helped me. Uh, you know, get everything. We got to set up settings. one more thing to make me happy with it. So just, yeah. just, just to go ahead and say it. Just to make sure that Twitch and everything would run smoothly. And I decided, well, I didn't decide. Wes kind of decided for me and I ran along with it to play Blair Witch. I figured it was the easiest thing to do because you already had Game Pass because you just picked up an Xbox Series X. Yeah. And it's on Game Pass. So why not? So if you want to jump in and watch the first of all, thank you to the people that did jump in and watch the stream for anyone that didn't, if you want to go back and watch it, I would suggest probably just skipping probably 25 to 30 minutes in <laughs> because the first 30 minutes was me wandering around the woods with my thumb up my butt. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't figure out where to do yelling at my dog. Like you have this dog, the dog with you. bullet. Yeah. You're, you're basically, you're searching for a lost kid in the, uh, the, um, Black Hills mountains, mountains, woods, forest, yeah. forest, whatever, where the Blair Witch be constantly like, you know, making people crazy and eating them and demon punching people and stuff. But, um, I actually don't want to make fun of it because I believe in that shit. Um, <laughs> so then in there you find a camcorder. Yeah. But, but before all that, it actually, the game is a lot deeper than I thought because when I was reading the breakdown of the game, it said something about like the game it says something like the game learns from how you play and how you do certain things it makes sense with that because of the way it explained bullet and yeah you know i mean and yeah and how bullet acts yeah your dog bullet is very much like an integral part of your survival because bullet is who you use to your your german chef is who you use to search you know to search out different clues and stuff like that you want to keep them close to you because the more you know the further part if you get separated from your dog this dude has like a full-on panic attack he it basically has, goes insane. He has PTSD. Yeah. It, I mean, it definitely looks like. I mean, it looks like he 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 dealt with some type of trauma, to, which is with, why in his, in his with his wife, I believe. I, or we don't know. It's uh, the we, game's so fresh. I'm not quite sure. So yeah. So we don't actually know his background. We don't know why he has PTSD. But he ends up with bullet because of what he went through. Because of what he went through. Because I mean, look, we all know this. You mean from seeing people with you mean with uh, service dogs. You know what I mean? Like I mean, yeah. they they help. And apparently, the and the dog apparently has like abandonment issues too. Yeah. So it's uh there's so there's this bond there and you, you know you got to stay close together and and whatnot so just take the goddamn dog but they're like this <laughs> i will tell you what though i love bullet for the first half hour could have taken old yeller out i wouldn't give a fuck this dog your couldn't wife, find your shit. wife was your wife was shitting on you so bad in the fucking she was like in the not, stream it's not the dog it's the owner <laughs> thanks wife <laughs> appreciate it you want to help now mm. <laughs> um i love my wife anyway um yeah, so the dog just couldn't find anything. And at one point, like, the dog just broke. 
<laughs> like the dogs. First of all, it's Blair Witch. For anyone that's ever seen Blair Witch, you understand the significance of like the last 15 minutes of that movie when the dude's just standing in the corner of the room, just staring at something. Like it's staring at the corner of the wall, not moving. Well, at one point, um, the dog just stops moving and is just staring at a tree, and it freaked me the hell out. Yeah, it freaked me. I was like, "What are you staring at?" And then I went and I like crouched in front of the dog, like, "Are you stupid? What are you doing?" And then the game froze. Yeah. My guy couldn't move. Because you were trying to... Uh... I tried to do a little bit of everything. I tried to like send him out, pet him. <laughs> I tried to do all sorts of stuff. But I broke the game. Um, <laughs> reloaded. It worked. I ended up finding this camcorder that seems to be like a link between the, the, the past and present almost. Yes. You, um, you, know, you use it and you find these cassette tapes that have basically like... T well, the ones that I found, one was 10 seconds and one was like 15. And it's footage of you know the boy that you're looking for mm -hmm. and i guess what happened to him along the way and you have to find times within the video to pause to find certain evidence go ahead. so i will go ahead and say that the people so the people that make this are, um is the company is called bloober and they have made another game that we streamed called the medium they also made another game that our friend adrian streamed who was also part of the stream i mean he was also part of the chat uh called observer so, if you want a lineage of the way that they made games, you have Observer, then Blair Witch, then The Medium. So, mm -hmm. they love, they absolutely love putting things in to try to go from, to figure out the past, to learn from the past, to figure out the future. Yes. And in uh, The Medium, it was the same exact thing. I mean, I'd find certain spots, and then I would have to rewind time to go ahead and, like, listen to what's happening, to go ahead and, and, give me, and learn about certain things. Mm -hmm. And they're doing the same thing with it with the camcorder. Certain things with the camcorder, certain things will appear in front of you. So when you first got fucked up with the camcorder, there was this little car, little, like a little, little toy police car. And what we didn't notice until a little bit later was that in, in, your, in, in your peripheral, you mean, looking near a campfire, the police car was just popping up out of nowhere, and, you know, and then it started making siren sounds. Yeah, and we're and like I saw that, and I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I was typing yeah. you. I'm like, I'm like, look, motherfucker, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you were so fixed on on the screen of the camcorder. Yeah, you weren't looking anywhere else. No, I didn't notice. So it helps things appear out basically out of thin air. And then yes. there was the baseball. You know what I mean? That <laughs> the rock. The ro yeah, yeah, yeah. We all called it a rock for the whole fucking time until we realized it was a baseball. And then. From that point on, shit got weird. Yeah, I, I was following my dog, and all of a sudden, it was like a damn Wendigo popped out or something. I don't know what it was, but something was attacking me. I don't quite know what happened, but that's where I left that <laughs> for the night. Because that was, unfortunately, that was like, that was probably only half an hour into the game, but it was two hours into my stream. Yeah. Because I spent half an hour wandering around the freaking woods, not being able to figure out where to go. And then I started to pick up steam a little bit, and then by then, I was just drained and anxiety had taken <laughs> over and i was like you know what let me go hang out with my wife um loved it though man but outside of that the first game that i played for my series x once i had game pass was ori and the blind forest because i had played ori way back when it first came out but i only played it for maybe a few hours i'm assuming as always something else came out took my attention away as it does i never finished but i played ori that game is fantastic that game is fantastic. I loved it. The 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 visuals, how everything pops, and like how like when you when you you know bring that land back to life, and you know the water, you purify the water, and, and all this stuff. Like everything looks great. The sounds are great. And I, as usual, when I play a game for the first time on a new system, I went a trophy hunt. So there's and then, 50, and you also have you know, I mean like the big. You know what I mean? The dude for selling yeah. Job of the Hut. Oh yeah. You know, with, with 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 that deep voice, but all he's really doing is just trying to tell you a story. Yeah. Um, I love that shit. That's so I think there's such like a good game. 57 achievements. I got 56 of them. That's where it's gonna stay because I'm not even gonna attempt the other one. Because <laughs> um, there's there's um and I and I wondered why there's a difference because there's an achievement which I got for beating the game without dying. And I was like, so I assume, because there's a mode called One Life Difficulty. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, so I guess I'd just do the same thing that I just did, except for do it on One Life Difficulty. The difference is, on any other mode, the game is very forgiving with its save system. Because you can save, exit to the main menu, and then you can copy and paste your save slots to like 10 further slots. So then you go back in, you load, 
if you die somewhere, you can just delete that save, move one of your old copy ones Glitch over and go. And, that, and that's how people do the, the one life thing. And, you know, that's what I did. And I beat it. One life difficulty is what it is. You get one life. You cannot copy and paste. If you try to copy and paste to another slot, all it does is just move your game over. <laughs> there is no copy and paste. And the ones, the one life difficulty is very much you die, you start back from the beginning. That's it. Okay. Um, I did the speed run. There was a speed run to complete the game in under three hours. I completed it in like an hour and 53 minutes. God damn. Or something like that. Yeah. I was actually pretty impressed because when I, normally when I'm going to do speed runs, I try to, you know, like I look up other people that did speed runs and I just check their timestamps. Like they're mm -hmm. like, you know, for me to beat it by three hours, I was at this point at 50 minutes, this point at, well, uh, the mountain that that mountain at the end i think it's called like mount horu or Huru. i forget what it's called but the mountain at the end a dude, a dude that said at his his best run where he completed the game in like two hours and 10 minutes he said in my best run i was arriving at that mountain at about an hour and 50 minutes at an hour and 50 minutes i was already doing that last escape from that giant ass owl yeah so i was like ooh, i got this and i did i did three simultaneously so i did Complete, I did the speed run, I did the doing it with one life, and um, never upgrading your abilities. I did all those three at once. Oh, so shit. I didn't, okay. I didn't use any ability points, none of that. Um, you know, then I beat the game on hard, um, which after doing a speed run, not trying to die, not using ability points is super easy because you die, you just whatever, doesn't matter. Yeah. But uh, that game was great, and then I moved right into Will of the or Wisp. in the Will of the Wisp, and I didn't think that the game <clears throat> could look prettier yet it does they they dive much more into the saturation of dark and light in that i mean in in well the wisp yeah i believe um like yo like like the whites really really pop and the darks are like oversaturated black now i haven't looked to see if you can change things around because one thing that i actually don't enjoy is that they've switched controls from the first game to the second game mm -hmm. and i'm i'm fumbling a little bit mm -hmm. you going back to those old controls so like when you use the uh the bash to like use projectiles to like boost yourself yeah. up in the first game it's the y button in this one it's lb and i'm like i'm dying fumbling around hitting the wrong button because i've just played the other game four different times yeah and, and all that stuff but i love the game it's great i love some of the different things they added to it i like that you can customize your build like that's that's pretty sweet. Yeah, you can go ahead and pick. I mean, whether you want more of a health type build or whether you want like your magnet to go ahead and like pull things really, really to, uh, towards you, like your light and stuff like that. Yeah, and rather just you know getting you know ability points and you know this costs one, this costs two. You just, like you collect the the energy from all over and collect then you can the light. People and buy you know buy what you want. Buy upgrades, upgrade, upgrade buy maps. You want. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm having a lot of fun with that. I'll probably be playing that tonight. Nice. But yeah. That's me. Well, let me go ahead and tell you what I'm probably going to play tonight after I'm done working on the stream. Outriders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, look, man, I... So, they just released a patch, or, or at least for Xbox, they're going to release it real soon to go ahead and help with people getting booted because that was, like, that's been my issue all week. I'll play, 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 having a great time with the guys, and then out of nowhere, I'll get fucking booted all the way back to the Xbox screen. And that shit fucking pisses me off. But... I've been sticking with the game because the game is fucking fun. The The loot drops are great. You can have, um, <clears throat> with a blue gun, so, I mean, so, you know the standard way the guns work. I was talking with Anthony about this last week. You have, like, white guns, then you go green, blue, purple, and then gold. Green guns don't have an attribute, don't have a mod on them. Blue guns have one mod, purple guns have two mods, and I think, um, gold guns have, they might have three, I, I, I don't know, I haven't found one yet. But you can modify one of the mods. You know what I mean? Like, if, so say you have purple and you have two mods, you can modify one of the mods, and you can change it to where like it uses other attributes from from other characters, like being able to slow characters down or being able to go ahead and cause them to be set on fire or burn or something like that. Like it's it is a lot of fun. You know what I mean? The way you can go ahead and change it, and dude, yo, you can change it instantaneously. If you're going against people, like, so for Devastator, you have this thing called Reflect Bullets to where I can put the shield up and I absorb all the bullets and then I shoot the bullets back out at everybody. You know I mean, I mean when okay. the time expires. Yeah. If, say, if I'm going against creatures and not people, obviously I don't need that ability. So, as long as that ability is able for me to be used, I can 
go into my menu, switch out to another ability, maybe like Tremor or you mean or you mean or something else. You mean that that works more for basically any type of any type of enemy, mm -hmm. and you can do it instantaneously. So I like how quickly you can change this shit on the fly. But um yeah, so that's basically all I've been doing. Um uh, no, I've been playing more Animal Crossing. I will say that I have fully, fully do dove into that game. It's been fun. Uh, I play basically every morning before work. <laughs> I play for like half hour every day before work, which it kind of shows that I have an addiction, but it's okay. I understand. And I see that. I, and I see my addiction, but, um, th th <laughs> I think today we have, uh, oh yeah, Jess was telling you. So my wife decided to take your route of, um, fishing last night it took her like two hours roughly but she went ahead and caught 100 fish in a row that is savage and the fact that she did it the right way yes that is extra savage yeah my my wife is a fucking badass and so we were talking about this like when she gets into a game like the way i know that she gets into a game is she starts looking things up online to see how you can do x y and z that's when i know she's hooked so i'm already just i'm smiling ear to ear at the fact that i bought this game for her because she she loves it and plus you know, she talked with your wife about it like last night they were going back and forth about animal crossing really? at first at first just wanted alex to scare you because she because i was sitting next to you in the beginning of the stream oh while i was playing yeah oh just wanted just wanted alex to scare you because just never has that opportunity with me because she doesn't come in the basement to watch me play Oh, so oh, I'm a bitch, it would have worked. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely would have worked. Maybe she didn't want to risk like me accidentally like maybe. elbowing her in the stomach maybe. or something. <laughs> maybe. But then after that, they were going back and forth about Animal Crossing for the next like hour and a half. Oh, she's a wealth of knowledge, let me tell you. Oh yeah. So that was actually pretty cool. And I mean, it's nice that you I mean Jess has somebody else to talk to about the game. Yeah, I told you, man, that game takes over once you get, once you get in it sayonara it's it's got you for it at minimum a year look man i i find my money trees and then i plant them and i mean i, I dig it up and then i put ten thousand in other um other creatures on our island are talking shit on me because they're like you don't they don't see you <laughs> oh no they no they see me do it and they don't know why oh. so like so, so so jess tells me that um like like she'll talk to other people on the island and they'll be like we just saw Wes go ahead and bury a bunch of bells. We don't know what's going on. We might have to go over and check it out. And I'm sitting there going, you better not touch my fucking money. <laughs> I will boot your I will boot your penguin ass off this motherfucking island. Did uh did Alex tell you about the way the um What do they call the goddamn what do they call the people that live on your island? I don't know. Visitors? We'll call them visitors community. for the sake of this conversation. Did she tell you about the way the visitor system works and like who not to boot off because you can only no. have a certain you can I, I forget what the number is but there's only a certain amount you can have on the island at once so there's like you and I, we're right now be... we're right now in the middle of building one of those okay. like intermediate places well, for, for for certain people to stay before they build a home or whatever there's hundreds of different visitors that you can get okay if someone gets tired of being on their island they'll tell you like hey i i kind of feel like i want to move away and if you let them go they'll go and then someone else will come but there's some they have a list on the computer of like the most highly sought after most coveted um visitors you can have and we actually have one of them which is celia she's like this eagle but she's like all white and re like regal you go in her house it looks like a freaking mansion oh wow like so those you definitely don't want to boot off they have it graded from like a plus down to f we had one that was you like gotta a, send that to jess so that way she can we had one that was like a it was like a it was like a cracked out demonic rhino. Alex couldn't wait to get him the hell out of there. Like you walked in, he had like a he had like a an oil drum with something nasty smoking in the corner. I was like, like he's got a meth lab on our island, <laughs> <laughs> and he's just what he talk <laughs> like it was really angry and Jess, demonic. Jess does not like dealing with Charlize at all. I don't know she's who Charlize rude. is. She's I'm a, assuming she's she's a green bear. Okay, and she's very rude to Jess and Elena. You mean when they talk to her? But um, I, I find it funny. We actually have one of our um, neighbors one, or visitors, the um, longtime uh, person, the person that's been there since us was uh, Sprocket, which we always oh, joke. Yeah. Which we always jo we joke is Anthony, because he's always working <laughs> out. He's always yeah. working out and showing off his muscles. Zort. Zort, trying to Zort trying to get you to, to come out and jog, and it's like, bruh, calm down. 
<laughs> Calm down, Swole Patrol. Ooh, one of the cool things that did happen, and we will be ending this podcast soon, trust me. <laughs> one of the things that was cool was that I found Tarantula Island. Yeah, I, I wanted you to I, talk about I that. actually found, yeah, you one. found it. You didn't make it. No, I didn't make it. And that shit was, dude, I got bit like five times, but I caught 29 tarantulas. That's money. And like, money, uh, money, I, money. I put it on Discord and I put it out on, on, on my personal Twitter account. Um, In my house, that shit looks fucking insane. There are Bro, so many fucking tarantulas like, at my house. They don't scare me like they do my wife and your wife, but I will not lie. When you're not expecting it and it sees you before you see it and you just see this little thing like running after you super fast, there's a party that goes, oh, shit. <laughs> so it was really funny because I did have one point to where like, I mean, so, so so it was like the island, but then there was a there was a moat around the whole thing. And then in the middle, I mean, that's where all the tarantulas were. So when I would jump over the moat, someone was bound to one would jump and then start coming at me. So I I jumped back over. And he just ran right to the water. And then that was it. And the, then there was no more tarantula. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, at least he can't jump. <laughs> <laughs> that shit would have been fucked up if I would have had to, like, try to go swim in the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nah, but, um, yeah, I found a tarantula island, which apparently is very rare. Yeah. See, now, I don't know. Because they're always coming out with patches and stuff like that. I don't know if they've increased the likelihood of filing, finding certain islands. Because finding Bamboo Island is rare too and you and found, I found it twice two. already yeah i found two we never we got there once months after going to islands we got our bamboo from visiting someone's random island yeah and we, and we were able to get it but we only you know you've gotten to bamboo island twice we've only gotten to it once we have so much fucking bamboo on our island now in Good. between you mean you mean between the new shoots and the junior you mean junior sprouts and just you mean the and the big ones yeah like dude yo we have it all over and now actually i have the opportunity to move my house so i'm actually i'm i'm looking to move my house somewhere you mean a little bit a little bit yeah. may, maybe on the other side of the it island t- dude it takes cheese to fully upgrade your house oh yeah i'm currently at three hundred forty-eight thousand to go i'm guessing to go ahead and build a second level because I already have the back room, or maybe maybe one of the side rooms that's going to get built. I'm yeah, not sure. I'm. I feel like by the time it's totally done, where you get living room, three rooms, upstairs, basement. I'm pretty sure the last the last one is l- maybe like a million bells, maybe two million bells. Fuck. I don't remember, but it's. I like, mean, yo, cheese. yo. But when you have the, you know, when you have the ability to stockpile those tarantulas and then you're kind of just waiting for flick to come around so you can sell them all to make and that's, it easier yeah man that's basically what i'm doing right now yeah but yeah between that and the fucking wasps like yeah, man, i'm holding the shit yeah but um yeah so that is what are we playing <laughs> it that, that that definitely took a little longer than i thought but there was a lot to talk about when it came down to uh ori and blair witch yeah and then obviously see, animal yeah. crossing because i mean apparently it is the new thing in my house before we went ahead, before we go and let Andy do the outro, I want to go ahead and again, number one, thank everybody who follows us on Twitter. Obviously, we're going to talk about it again. We reached a thousand listeners or a thousand followers now. Got a thousand listeners would be awesome. That shit would be insane. A thousand per episode. <laughs> but um, yeah, we reached a thousand followers on Twitter, so we want to go ahead and say truthfully, like honestly, thank y'all. It is so so fucking cool. You know I mean, to have that many people go ahead and actually be a part of like the uh, tw- our, our Twitter community, be part of the crew, as I continue to say, you know I mean, because I, I handle the Twitter account and be crew members. So because of that, we are doing a giveaway and the giveaway is going to be as simple as dropping us a DM or sending us an email at console gaming crew at gmail dot com. And from there, you will be put into the put into the raffle to go ahead and get the winning prize. The winning prize is going to be you will get both our OG, you know what I mean, logo sticker, you stickers. You'll be able to get our new headphone logo stickers, as well as one of two of the shirts of your choice. I mean, if you want to go ahead, well, that choice. <laughs> why did you, cho- you make choice do so? I don't know. <laughs> choice. <laughs> You'll also be able to get one of two of the shirts. You I mean, depending on what you want. So you can either get the old school logo, OG logo, or the headphones logo. And then we will also pay for one year of your gaming pleasure. Whether it be Nintendo, Xbox, or PlayStation, we will go ahead and send you a 12-month subscription. Yes, sir. So that is going to start literally when you guys go ahead and hear this so from the 11th and 12th is you mean when the episode's going to drop and it is going to run until the 23rd and then we will let everybody know on the 26th who the winner is and then we'll start getting that 
start getting all that moved forward. So, Andy, tell them where they can find us. All right. Well, it's t- I don't know why I just smacked my lips. Well, that and also, why the fuck it took you so long to do that? Like, I don't know, because I was actually, you sat there, like, I was actually you, confused. You froze. I was confused with the dates you gave for a second, because you said it's going to go to the 23rd, and then we'd let people know on the 26th. Well, yeah, because they're going to hear the episode on the 25th, 26th. Oh, yeah. I'm picking up what you're laying down. I was like, why don't we I record, get to know? We record on Saturdays, <laughs> I was, and, I was, then, and then we drop the episodes that Sunday night. The way I heard it, like, I don't even get to know until the 26th. I'm like, no, I'll know the next day. Yeah, you will. Okay, yeah, anyway. Absolutely. So, back as well as... Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Let's go again. So, <laughs> it's that time to connect with CGC. And the best way to do it, as we always tell you, is through our Twitter, which we just thanked everybody for because y'all are a kick-ass community that west runs you can reach us twitter at console crew yep we also have our dot com website console gaming crew.com we have our console gaming crew at gmail.com we also have youtube that these episodes all get released on that's console gaming crew on youtube we have instagram console gaming crew we have console gaming crew on facebook we shouldn't but we do nothing against facebook i just suck at it and our twitch is now all combined into one. We were all separate. We are now one unit. We are one unit. We are now, CGC podcast. Why would you say one unit? Yeah. We, we are. I. We are an absolute fucking unit on Twitch. You, you don't need to emphasize the unit. <laughs> <laughs> it said unit. <laughs> That's my point. CGC podcast. Um, again, Wes streams his uh, workouts. I believe three times a week. Right. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Roughly uh, Wes's 445. Workouts. Wes's workout. There's actually been a new wrinkle thrown into Wes's workouts. Yes. Um, every new follower I get, I will do two burpees. Yes. And believe me, you want him to do burpees, people. So follow. He hates burpees. The things I do for our brand. Absolutely. I have also now taken over Freaky Friday. So yes. I will be on Fridays probably, I'll say, from 8 to 10 until this game's over, West tells me it's about a six-hour runtime, which that's means what it'll saw. take me about 24 hours <laughs> wandering around the woods. But that's where you can find me. And as we mention all the time, we are also part of Boss Rush, ne- Bosh, Bosh Rush. Boss Rush Network, which is a great network of podcasters, not just in the video game community, but all sorts of communities. All sorts, yeah. And also, um, they actually have some great articles right now. They have one out about po- uh, Pac-Man 99. Mm-hmm. And um, you mean and everything about that. I think they have an article out now about um, something that we actually didn't talk about, which is the Last of Us is getting reworked again. You know what I mean for you know I mean for next gen for some fucking reason. But they have an article out for that too. So definitely go and check out Boss Rush at Boss Rush Games, Boss Rush Games dot com. We are freaking Marble Mouth as hell today. <laughs> I feel like Mush Mouth, man. Like my lips just don't want to separate. <laughs> it, but that's where they can find us. You just had a seizure. I did. The whole body's seizing right now. I don't know what's happening. We got another episode to record. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why did you just moan to me? It's because I'm laughing. I'm Why? Sorry. <laughs> so we got another episode, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't ever want you to look me in the face and moan, oh, yeah, to me ever Oh yeah! <laughs> oh. oh god! Oh my god! Say your thing. As oh, always, yeah. we love y'all. So please stay safe. Wash your hands. Mask the fuck up. Game on. And game on, y'all.